All right, so we're looking at about 130 milliamps, and with any drag, up to 170 milliamps. Way too much. Hey, what's happening, guys? You may recognize this little setup from yesterday's video. This is the DC motor with the Arduino RPM meter tachometer using the photo interrupter. And that's what we did in yesterday's video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link to it down below. And we powered the Arduino from the desk, or not the Arduino, we powered the motor from the desktop power supply. And there's a reason for that. So let's bring in a meter. Let me prop it up so the uh, the bench lights don't make that little. There we go. Okay, so this is set up as an ammeter. Let's measure how much current this motor is taking at our five volt input. So we're looking at 135 milliamps. And if there's any drag on the motor, whoa, that's way no good for an Arduino that you only want to source 20 milliamps out of a pin. So we need to look at a different way to power the motor. The motor is basically going to have to be powered separately from the Arduino, but controllable from the Arduino. And that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to do it using this guy here. That you might remember from a previous video that's a MOSFET I'll link that video in down below let's hook this up so we can control this motor from the Arduino all right so we're gonna power the Arduino oh, God I keep saying Arduino we're gonna power the motor from a separate source so here's our connection to our separate source but even when using separate power supplies one thing you always have to keep in mind is that we need to tie our grounds together so that the Arduino and the uh, power supply both are speaking from a common reference point when they speak about zero volts okay so next what we'll do is we'll take the motors positive connection and we will attach it to our plus 5 volt rail Okay, then we'll bring in our MOSFET down here. Put it in here like so. And we'll take our source pin. This is an IFR34N, IFRZ30, well, you know what I mean. And it goes gate, drain, source. So we are going to source to ground. So we'll put a jumper from ground to our source pin like that. And we're going to drain from the negative connection of our motor. I just have a I have solder on these wires to make them stick into the breadboard hole so I got to push them in like that in case you're wondering why I was using that and I got sinuses so pardon the sniffles and finally we have our gate wire which will plug into the gate now if I power up our power supply nothing happens because the drain to source junction is not open until we bring the gate above ground. So if we touch it to our plus five volt rail, the motor runs and it continues to run until it is brought to ground. Check out the MOSFET video if you don't know why that happens. Okay. But we're not going to be touching to ground and doing all that here. What we're going to do is much simpler. 
we're going to drive it from a digital pin. In this case, we'll pick a digital four. So now let's write some code to control it. Okay, here's our code and it's about as simple as can be. One change, um, I said digital four, we need to be on digital five. We need to be using a PWM pin. But other than that, there's the code. We're setting our value for set RPM here at 127. Our maximum value is 255. Minimum value, of course, is zero. So that's about halfway. We set pin mode, pin five for output. And we write it to the value of set RPM. So let's go look at it. Okay, the code is uploaded, and I've moved this wire over to one of the PWM pins 5, as we talked about there in the code. And if we power up the power supply, the motor runs. But what happens if power to the Arduino is cut off? Everything stops. Power back up. And there we go. Okay, so that's the way to control it at one particular speed. What if we want to control it at multiple speeds? Well, that's pretty easy too. All we need is a potentiometer. I got a little one here. And we'll plug it in like that and hook up some jumper wires to it. So we will hook one side up to <clears throat> our plus five volts, like that. We will hook the other side to our ground, like that. And where they come together, the wiper we will hook up to one of the Arduino's analog pins. In this case, we'll use pin A2. Now, when we adjust that potentiometer, we'll be able to control the speed of the motor. But first, we need to make a little adjustment to the code. So let's hop back over to the computer and do that. Okay, here's our updated code to control the RPMs. So you see now we initially are doing our set RPM at zero. And we've added pin mode A to its input. Now we're going to create an integer called J, and it is going to be equal to the analog read of A2. And that's the actual read of that potentiometer. It'll vary from zero to 1023. Then we're going to take our set RPM and map it to J with a minimum J of zero, a maximum J of 1023, and our output will be a minimum of zero and a maximum of 255, the maximum value for the PWM. And then again, we will write to pin five that set RPM value, and we'll be able to control the speed of the motor using that potentiometer. All right, let's go look. Okay, our code is uploaded. Let's power up our motor power. Now our potentiometer is set at zero, so there's nothing there. As we increase it, do you hear the whine? The motor's getting ready to start. And there it is. Now, once we've overcome that initial inertia, we can slow it down pretty slow. And then we can take it all the way up to full power. And like you said, we're probably getting that 200 milliamps, but the Arduino isn't seeing any of that and is protected from the excessive current. So that is pretty cool. And now you guys know how to control your motor speed using a MOSFET, an Arduino, and PWM.
you like that, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, please check out the Patreon page. Buck a month to keep the channel alive. A big thank you to all my patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.